when the neoclassical school was new in the 19th century, one of the most common names for neoclassical economics was marginalism. So we need to learn what that term means. It turns out that the best way to think about it is in terms of graphs. So we're, we'll be uh, discussing marginalism in terms of graphs. So let's start with the representation of a mathematical function. Here's a function of one variable, y equals f of x, where x is called the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. And you are, I'm sure, familiar with the standard way of sketching such a function. Let's start by just considering a linear function. A linear function has a representation in the xy plane of a straight line, for example, for example this. The equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus b, and you know that b is called the y-intercept, and m is called the slope. And the term marginal is the same thing as slope. So we have an analytical representation of slope, that is this m, but we need to have a graphical interpretation of it. A line has a constant slope. The slope is the same regardless of where you measure it. The graphical, for the graphical interpretation, we can take two arbitrary points and draw a triangle like so. A uh, slope can be represented by rise over run. And the rise mathematically is denoted delta y, the run mathematically delta x, where delta, this is the uppercase Greek letter delta that looks like a triangle, is mathematical notation for change in. So delta y is the vertical change. Delta x is the horizontal change. So the slope is delta y over delta x. For example, if I put some put some numbers here that that uh, that might make some sense. Suppose this maybe is ten. This is fifteen. Perhaps this is oh, I don't know four. And maybe this is six then delta y would be the difference between 6 and 4, which is 2, and delta x would be the difference between 15 and 10, which is 5, and so the slope would be 2 fifths. And it doesn't matter which two points you pick on the straight line, they'll all have the same slope. Now, the notion of slope is, is fairly old. When, when Isaac Newton came came along, uh, and, and he had a similar idea to a German mathematician named, named Leibniz, they were wondering whether it might make sense to try to come up with some way of extending the notion of the slope of a straight line to a curve. Now, before they worked, there was no such thing as a slope of a curve. A curve was just didn't have a slope. So what Newton and Leibniz did was to invent a new definition of the slope of a curve. And went something like uh, something like this. So here we have a, uh, a curved line. Well, it's a curve. It's not a straight line. It's a curve. And the question is, what uh, what can we say the slope is at this point? So here's x. Here's y. This is f of x. What meaning can we assign to the slope 
of f at uh, this point. I'm going to call this point x naught. Now, when mathematicians use a zero as a subscript on a variable, instead of saying x zero or x sub zero, what they often say is x naught, and the word they're using is this word. It isn't this word. In other words, x naught. The the, the what that means is n a u g h t. It's the British English for the number zero, and uh, you should shouldn't think of the word n o t. That isn't what we're talking about. Okay, so uh, what is the slope of f at x naught? Well, uh, they thought um, one way to define the slope of f at x naught would be to take. Imagine taking some some other x, call it x1 over here. And suppose you drew a straight line between those two points. If you drew a straight line between them, then you'd have a straight line in your graph. And having a straight line in your graph, you could calculate the slope of that line. And then if you picked another value of x that's closer to x naught than x1 was, then you'd have another potential line. Whoops, I don't know where that came from. Sorry. Uh, let's see, for some reason. My computer wants to interpret this in a different way than I want to. Okay, there we go. That's a kind of squiggly straight line. The uh, so that has a, that has a different slope than the first. And the idea was, then you could pick another point x three and draw the straight line between x three and x naught. Another point x four and draw the straight line between x4 and x0, those are kind of hard to draw, but but then you can imagine the limit of these slopes as x approaches x0, and that limit is the way Newton and Leibniz defined the slope of the curve f of x at the straight line x0. What you end up getting, if you want to measure that slope is what's called a tangent line. And a tangent line is a straight line. It is equal to f of x uh, at x naught, but everywhere else it's not it's it lies on one side of f of x. Here it lies above f of x. And if you're able to draw the tangent line, then you can take two slope two points on it find the rise over the run and that'll be the uh, the slope of the curve let me let me give you another example So there's another curve. Suppose I wanted to find the slope here. Let me show you the wrong way to do it. The following is not a tangent line. It's not a tangent line because a tangent line needs to be, except at the point where it touches, it needs to be either on one side of the function or on the other side of the function, uh, at least around around the point you're interested in. So the right way to draw the tangent line here would be this way. So that's a tangent line. 
And if you measure that slope by taking two points and calculating the, the rise over the run, didn't draw that very well, delta y, delta x, then, uh, then you get the slope of the tangent line. If you, if you calculate the slope along the dashed line, of course you get the wrong answer because it's not a tangent line. You can do the same thing over on the left, and it's rather easy to figure out what tangents look like if you remember that they need to stay on one side of the function. Now that was... okay, that's a little bit better. If the function is has a different shape, say this kind of shape, and let's say you were trying to get the tangent line to here, a mistaken attempt would be this. That's not a tangent line because it's below the function on the right and above the function on the it's 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 above the function on the right and below the function on the left. A correct tangent line in this case would look like this. Okay. Uh, again, it's, that's supposed to touch. I didn't quite draw it touching. We have y and and we have x. So um, that is the explanation of what the slope of a function is. The slope is also called the marginal. And I'll next do a few more examples.